Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 20th Annual Minority Legislative Breakfast. I'm Tanya Bui, your MC for today's breakfast event. While I know that breakfast is in our official event name, this year we're having breakfast together virtually in the comfort of our own homes or offices across Montgomery County, and that's due to the global pandemic we're facing. But we're grateful today to host this virtual event with our media sponsor, Montgomery Community Media. For two decades now, the Asian American Political Alliance, African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County have all united to host this special event. Each of them representing the three major minority communities in Montgomery County, and each with the collective purpose of coming together for the common good. Our goal today of the Minority Legislative Breakfast is to shed light on the most pressing and unique issues of the three respective minority communities at large. Today, we bring forth a planned approach of effective legislation for our county, state, and federal elected officials so they can address the specific economic and special needs of minorities. And even though we're virtual today, we're keeping the spirit of our breakfast event alive. We have a great lineup for you this morning. We'll hear from each of the event co-chairs from the three host organizations. Each will touch on this year's theme, legislating and governing in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're honored to have our elected officials for the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives, the Maryland General Assembly, Montgomery County Executive, and the Montgomery County Council. Now, before I introduce our first speaker, I'd like to acknowledge all of our wonderful sponsors who believe in amplifying the voices of our respective minority communities. We're so grateful to have many sponsors who continue to support our event over the years. I'd like to start off by thanking and acknowledging our crystal sponsors. Holy Cross Health. And thank you to our platinum sponsors. Adventist Healthcare. David and Michael Blair. Montage Marketing, Pepco. Thank you to our gold sponsors, Montgomery College, the universities at Shady Grove. And last but not least, thank you to our silver sponsors, African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, Asian American Political Alliance, Cafe Madrano, Coordination Council of Chinese American Associations, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, Montgomery County Government, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Montgomery County Branch, Jeffrey Slavin, Suburban Hospital, Johns Hopkins Medicine. And now, I'm honored to introduce Carmen Larson, Chair of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County. Since we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of our event, she'll share with us a little history behind the Minority Legislative Breakfast. And now to you, Carmen. Good morning. Thank you for being here and welcome to the 20th Annual Minority Legislative Breakfast. This year, because of the pandemic, we're on a virtual platform. So I wanna thank our partner, Montgomery Community Media, for helping us put this event together and being here with you. It means so much to have your support and your partnership. It's the 20th year. We started in 2001 and we're still here. It's a joint collaborative effort with the Asian American Political Alliance, the African American Chamber of Commerce, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce from Montgomery County. We work on it all year through, and we come up with our common joint priorities for, for our minority communities. And, and it's, it's hard work and we, um, we struggle because there's so many things that matter to us. And we want you to, to know about the main things, the more important things, the things that are most relevant this year. The event started in 2001. It, it actually was an idea of uh, Mr. James McDonough, who's not even a minority himself, but he's very, very interested in what happens in this county. And this is, this is a way to show you that it's not just minorities who care about our diversity, it's everybody in this county. Um, and, and as it should be, because we are all one people in this county, 
even though we have specific areas that make a difference because of our cultural differences, our language differences and so forth. Thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, without further ado, I think we have a pretty heavy agenda. Thank you to our legislators for, for uh, looking out for us. And thank you for our county leaders, our state leaders, our leadership all, all, um, all throughout uh, this great state of Maryland and this Montgomery County. Thank you very much. And I'm going to turn it over to Tonya Bui, who's going to be our NMC for, for the rest of this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carmen. And now I have the honor of introducing Dr. Michael Lin, the president of the Asian American Political Alliance. He will share with us the minority legislative breakfast agenda for this year. Take it away, Michael. Good morning to you all. My name is Michael Lin. I'm the president of Asian American Political Alliance. It's my honor to speak on behalf of the three host organizations. Our three communities, the African American, Asian American, and Latino American, when you come together, we represent more than 50% of the county population. On this 20th anniversary, we have joined force again to share our unique concerns and to identify ways to help our communities. It's my pleasure to unveil our joint legislative agenda that focuses on helping our diverse community recover from this unprecedented pandemic. Our agenda covers three categories. The first category is on the economic recovery for family and small business. We encourage our state and local government to provide a safety net for vulnerable families to maintain their most basic needs, including food, healthcare, and housing. We call for emergency housing, rental assistance, and the extension of eviction ban for those who need them. In addition, our government agency will provide incentives and mechanism to protect local small business. Their access to capital, credit, support services are essential for them to sustain and to create jobs. The second category is on closing the cultural, racial, and economic gaps in education and workforce training. The education experiences of K through 12 students are impacted by the pandemic. As a result, the gaps widen. In order to provide equally nurturing environment at less wealthy neighborhood, extra incentive should be provided to a quality teacher to accept assignment at those schools. The minority community will also benefit from non-traditional career program. The third category focuses on community safety and social justice, which was severely impacted by the pandemic. In response, we advocate for community policing with cultural sensitivity, as well as hiring police officers reflecting the community diversity. This agenda could not have been formulated without the contribution of many leaders of Montgomery County, but there's just too many to mention here. In closing, I wish to share with you an observation. I'm sure most of you have noticed during the last few years that America has become a divided nation with a polarizing political climate. While the divisiveness has brought challenges to our community, perhaps it is also an opportunity, an opportunity for an honest 
dialogue to understand each other between the two sides. I hope it's not too late to repair the damage and for us to come together again as a nation. Hopefully, that is not just my wishful thinking. And thank you very much for your attending. And please stay on for the next portion of our program. And you will hear from our elected official who will explain how they want to address our concerns. Hello, I'm Senator Ben Cardin, and I'm honored to join you for the 20th annual Minority Legislative Breakfast. I want to thank our hosts, the Asian American Political Alliance, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the African American Chamber of Commerce, who have brought us together each year for two decades to discuss the legislative priorities of Montgomery County's minority communities. Like so many of our traditions during the pandemic, this year's event looks a little different than in years past. While I am disappointed we cannot be together this year, I am grateful for the opportunity to provide you all with a virtual update. The need for a second round of economic relief has been apparent for many months, but it's now more important than ever due to the nationwide surge in COVID-19 cases. A second COVID-19 relief bill is even more urgent for minority communities, which have faced the worst economic and public health consequences of this pandemic. My partner in the Senate, Chris Van Hollen, and I have been working together to move forward a package that will help our local small businesses, especially minority-owned small businesses. The next relief bill must be comprehensive. It must meet the scale of the need in our communities, and it must be targeted to the most vulnerable small businesses. Montgomery County and other communities need national testing and tracing. They need another round of PPP, IDLE, and other small business aid. They need support for schools to operate safely, whether it's virtual, in-class, or hybrid. And as hospitalization rates skyrocket, communities need funding for state and local government, hospitals, and first responders, struggling under the costs of fighting the pandemic. As we begin to navigate the economic recovery in the years ahead, we must ensure that small businesses and minority communities are not left behind. We must build federal capacity to provide more small businesses with access to affordable capital, as well as increase federal contracting opportunities. I am proud to share that the Biden-Harris administration shares these goals, and I'm looking forward to working together to enact policies that empower minority entrepreneurs to grow their businesses and create jobs. Thank you and stay safe. It's an honor to join everybody for the 20th annual gathering of the Minority Legislative Breakfast. Uh, I think I've joined you for virtually everyone in person and look forward to the time when we can do that again. I wanna thank all the organizing groups the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the Asian American Political Alliance. Thank you for continuing to bring us together to focus on an agenda that moves us forward together as a county, as a state, and I would say as a country. One that focuses on equal opportunity, equal justice, and equal rights. And now it's time that we renew our journey on the path to building a more perfect union. Not that we simply go back to where we were four years ago, but that we do build back better. And that means that we need to address issues of wealth and income inequality. We need to address issues of social and racial justice. We need to address pressing issues like climate change. And we need to do that in the spirit of unity and coming together. And that means laying out a clear agenda uh, for our county, for our state, and for our country. 
And I'm so glad and privileged to have a chance to work with all of you as we lay out the specific pieces and policies to make that agenda real. Always focused on the fact that we are stronger together, that we need to meet the needs of everybody in our diverse community, and that by making sure we have inclusion and opportunity for all, we will lift us all up as a community and a state and a country. I look forward to working with you in this coming year. Greetings, everyone. This is Congressman Sarbanes. I want to thank Michael Lynn with the Asian American Political Alliance, Janice Freeman with the African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, and Carmen Larson with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County for the invitation to speak with you again this year at the Minority Legislative Breakfast. I wish we could be together in that big room at the hotel with a good breakfast in front of us, but that's not to be this year, obviously. Uh, but I did want to take a few moments to say hello. Let me commend all of you, not just the organizations that I mentioned, but all of you who for so many years have been advocating to make sure that public policymakers like myself and others at the federal, state, and local level are shaping public policy in a way that meets the needs of diverse communities, communities of color, uh, communities that have often been marginalized across our country and even in the state of Maryland. Your expertise, your insight, your experience, the data that many of you collect and bring to bear on these public policy discussions is absolutely indispensable, and I want to thank you for that. Of course, I have been working with the other members of the Maryland federal delegation over the last many months to address the impact of this pandemic both the health impact and the economic impact, which we know falls disproportionately on certain communities across our country. And that's why it's so critical that we get the benefit of your insight as we design those relief packages. We've gotten some major things done. We have to continue to look at these issues around rental assistance, mortgage assistance, stimulus payments, unemployment insurance benefits, investing in our healthcare infrastructure, hospitals, schools, helping small businesses at this critical moment, SNAP and nutrition benefits, all the things that can lift up families in this difficult time. We will continue to do that at the federal level. We have President Biden and Vice President Harris coming in now to assist all of us with that. I'm looking forward to it. So again, thank you for your terrific work and I hope next year we will be together. Hi, I'm Congressman David Trone from Maryland's six districts. I'd like to thank chairs, Dr. Michael Lynn, Carmen Larson, and Janice Freeman for the opportunity to speak with all of you today for the 20th Annual Minority Legislative Breakfast. I'm honored to represent Montgomery County in Congress, where we draw strength from our diversity. There's no question that this pandemic has been catastrophic to our academy. We're feeling it all across the country and right here at home. Small businesses are struggling to make ends meet. Workers are struggling to put food on the table. This is especially true for communities of color who are hard hit by the economic crisis and largely left out of the Paycheck Protection Program funding. People are hurting and it's our job as legislators to help. That's why we need to take swift, bold action to empower our workforce and bring our economy back. As a member of the House Education and Labor Committee, I'm working to do just that. I'm a co-sponsor of the National Apprenticeship Act, which just passed the House to expand apprenticeship opportunities to young people and the unemployed. I'm also a co-sponsor of the Relaunching America's Workforce, which would invest $15 billion into workforce training, career, and tech education. And lastly, 
I'm pushing for another COVID relief package that puts workers and small businesses first. These are real common sense solutions that will give workers in Montgomery County the opportunities they need to be successful. I'm gonna to continue to work hard in a bipartisan way to get these bills over the finish line and to the president's desk for signature. That's how we're gonna help Montgomery County residents, Marylanders, and the entire country safely get back to business. Thank you, take care, and most importantly, be safe. Hi, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin from Maryland's beautiful 8th District, uh, saying hello to all my friends at the 20th anniversary celebration of the Minority Legislative Breakfast. It's always one of my favorite events of the year. I'm sorry that we're not going to be together in person this year, but we will be back together next year in person when we've got uh, vaccination and we've uh, truly turned the corner uh, on the coronavirus. Thank you to Dr. Michael Lynn, to Carmen Larson, to Janice Freeman, to uh, Tanya Bui, to everyone who organized this. Hello to my friends, uh, David Trone and John Sarbanes, and to all of the members of the uh, county council, our county executive, the members of uh, the school board, and all of our friends uh, from around the county who've assembled for this always uh, joyful and exciting and determined event. Um, on Capitol Hill, uh, our focus is gonna be on a few things of relevance uh, to uh, the assembled group today. One is we've got to get the coronavirus package done. Uh, we passed in the House of Representatives uh, the HEROES Act more than six months ago now. And alas, uh, the Senate has not taken it up, has not had hearings on it. Uh, and it's been a, a little bit like uh, the hokey pokey, one foot in, one foot out, and so on. We need the Senate really to come into this thing with us. So uh, we're organized together to get aid to our people. We have tens of millions of unemployed people who are suffering. We need that $600 a week that we had in the original CARES Act. We've got to renew that for our people. We need renewed PPP funding for the small businesses that have been suffering uh, under the economic calamity that has followed uh, in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. We need to replenish the coffers of all of our public health uh, agencies and entities, including NIH. Um, and uh, we need um, massive funding. We passed for more than a trillion dollars uh, for uh, state and local funding. Um, and we've lost now more than a million employees nationwide in state, county, and local government at a time of rising need uh, they have had fewer resources and fewer people on hand to help. So we got to deal with that. Secondly, uh, I'm fighting for passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which is going to mandate dashboard cameras and body cameras for all the officers. It's going to require that any police department that gets our federal aid uh, will stipulate that it will use lethal force only to repel lethal force and not lethal force uh, against subdued suspects like George Floyd was. Um, so we have to uh, end the scourge of police violence against our people. That's a fundamental promise of the social contract. We're supposed to be safer uh, in society than we would be outside of society with its laws and its rules. So we gotta get that done. We gotta get rid of those corrupt uh, judge-made doctrines like um, qualified immunity that are preventing us from having real justice in these kinds of cases. So. Uh, we're going to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act because we need to end these systems of voter suppression and kicking voters off the rolls. Uh, we've got to get America moving in the right direction again. And I just want to thank all of you for always staying determined and focused on advancing the priorities of the community that will help all of us, that will strengthen democracy and freedom and justice for everybody. So I'm saluting all my friends there. I wish I could be with you and I look forward to working with you on our priorities over the coming year. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Maryland State Senator Craig Zucker, chair of the Montgomery County Senate delegation. I bring greetings on behalf of Senators Feldman, Lee, Kagan, Waltstriker, Kramer, Smith, and King. 
It's a great honor to join you if it couldn't be uh, physically, uh, virtually for the annual Minority Legislative Breakfast that has been so successful over the years and will continue being successful. We've all seen the impact of what COVID has had on our communities. And I could tell you that the Senate and the House will be focused on three things heading into this next legislative session. COVID, 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 and everything around it. When it comes to economic recovery, uh, helping out uh, our, uh, our businesses and our communities that have been most impacted uh, by this terrible uh, disease and the economic downturn that it's caused. We're gonna be focused on bringing back resources and money to, to Montgomery County to make sure that businesses uh, and, uh, and nonprofits that are barely hanging on uh, have the resources they need to survive. And we'll also be focused on education. Uh, we know that there's been this achievement gap and because of everything around COVID, we now see an achievement valley. So we're gonna be making sure that our children stay competitive and have the resources that they need as well. But look, we're all in this together and we will get through this together. Uh, it might take a little bit of time, but we will get through it. And just know that your entire Montgomery County Senate and House delegation are standing with you to be there, uh, to be, help be a voice for you in Annapolis and know that we, our doors will always be open to you. I wanna congratulate you on behalf of uh, all the Montgomery County Senators on a, a great breakfast and looking, looking forward to many more. Hello, my name is State Delegate Mark Corman, Chair of the Montgomery County House Delegation to Annapolis. And on behalf of all 24 members of the House Delegation, I bring you greetings. We have a really great and diverse set of delegates representing Montgomery County in the Maryland House. We have a majority female delegation. We have African American members, white members, Asian American, Latina, Latina, gay, straight. We re really represent the full diversity of Montgomery County uh, in Annapolis. And we look forward to working with you during the 2021 legislative session to advance your issues, to advance your agenda. And I know one of those issues is uh, increased opportunities in career and technical education. And the first thing we need to do is get the Blueprint for Maryland's Future, also known as Kerwin, back on track. As a major component of that was making sure that those who want to pursue career and technical education opportunities had the chance to do so. Of course, we also need to do more uh, besides uh, the Kerwin Commission, the Blueprint for Maryland's Future relate to apprentices, uh, apprenticeships, the EARN program, all sorts of other things that we can work on together. So we look forward to working with you. It's going to be a strange session. We're not going to be uh, quite as uh, uh, all in one place as usual, but please reach out to every member of the House delegation, starting with me, and we look forward to talking with you about how to advance your priorities on career and technical education and all sorts of other issues. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all this year. I wish we could be together in person as we usually are, but this is far from a usual year. This year has been hard for so many of us, and it's been especially hard for our minority communities. The infection rates and death rates have been higher in our communities of color than in the general community. Our minority businesses have been hit harder, people are suffering, and I know that my staff has worked to develop programs to help as much as possible one thing that's certainly been laid bare is the long-standing historic injustices that contribute to conditions that made these communities especially vulnerable to COVID. We have multicultural and multilingual outreach throughout our communities, using our liaisons for African, African-American, Asian and Caribbean, Latino, Middle Eastern, and the faith communities. We are organizing testing events in areas of the county with high minority populations. We have an aggressive testing program throughout the county. We have multilingual outreach, and we're helping with medical co-pays, food, and COVID-19 kits that include masks, gloves, and more. And we're helping connect residents with physicians and other medical professionals who know and understand the different communities and the issues around cultural competency, language, and frankly, history because they are a part of these communities. We are working with residents to prevent eviction through rental assistance programs, or, and we're working with landlords to help work out payments for tenants. We've provided emergency relief payments and childcare support. And we've also provided business assistance, including assistance for the very smallest businesses, microloans. 
And I've continued to advocate at the state level for a much larger infusion of money to support our local small businesses. I'm very concerned about happens, what happens when eviction protections end. And I fear that small businesses that often have the least capital and reserves have little capacity to pay rents for periods when they had no income. This country needs to recognize that in order to do the things that would keep people safe, major damage was done to the business community. These businesses did nothing wrong, didn't create the COVID problem, and are suffering because we needed to limit their activities in order to limit and ultimately end the spread of COVID. And the federal government needs to step up and minimize the damage that resulted. We are working nonstop to help our communities who are suffering and who will be suffering for some time. I will continue to push for these efforts, but we need the help from the state and from the federal government. We need an extended moratorium on evictions, both for residents and businesses, and on foreclosures. After the moratorium's end, we need to help residents work out payment plans so they can stay in their homes and businesses can stay in their businesses. Stable housing is essential to mental and physical health, and I will work with our elected officials at the state and federal level to get financial support and policy support that we need to keep our residents and our homes healthy. Even when recovery begins with a vaccine, we must not forget that our communities of color will likely be the last to recover. So please keep advocating and pushing for what you know we need and know that I am with you. Together, we are working on it and we will work this out. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Pucker and I'm the president of the Montgomery County Council. I wanna thank my longtime friends, Dr. Michael Lynn, Carmen Larson and Janice Freeman for inviting me to be here and for organizing this event. Michael, Carmen, and Janice, I've been paying attention to you and your member organizations for nearly 20 years. Thank you for always being tireless advocates for the communities you serve, for amplifying their concerns to us at the county, state, and even the federal level. This has been an incredibly difficult year given the unprecedented health crisis and the resulting economic crisis we're now facing. But what we've seen across the country isn't unique to 2020. Communities of color, are bearing the brunt of this latest virus just as they've suffered from persistent health disparities for many years. People of color have long been underserved by healthcare and overburdened by chronic diseases that put individuals at a heightened risk for COVID-19. And of course, people of color are overrepresented in many of the industries that are the hardest hit, especially in our essential services, making up many of our nurses, hospital workers, bus drivers, grocery workers, all places where workers can't work safely from home. The County Council has stepped up and acted with urgency to protect our most vulnerable residents during this pandemic, but still there's much work to do. Since the onset of the pandemic, we've appropriated $255 million to address the needs of residents and businesses impacted by COVID-19, including $76 million to re restaurants and small business relief, $10 million in emergency food assistance, nearly 8 million in childcare support grants, 22 million in rental relief and eviction prevention, and $5 million in financial assistance for our low-income households. While we address this pandemic, we're also recognizing the long overdue fight for racial equity and fair policing all across the U.S. and making strides to address those inequities as well. We've passed programs to increase equity, transparency, and community trust in our public safety agencies. We've appropriated funds to respond to mental health calls through expanded mobile crisis units. We've conducted an audit of police data collection and reporting and increased public access to police data, including tracking officer complaints and data rela related to race, ethnicity, and gender in policing. But we're not stopping anytime soon. In 2021, we plan to expand the county's capacity to respond to mental and behavioral health issues by adding six licensed clinical social workers to expand our crisis response teams, placing them around the county for fast response. We're looking at shifting some traffic safety enforcement to the Department of Transportation to limit our unnecessary traffic stops and reducing the penalty for nuisance crimes as well. I'm really proud of the work my colleagues have done and the amazing community groups that we work with every day for leading us to a fairer and more just future for our residents. We take this commitment very seriously in all the work we do, and we'll continue to do that in the year ahead. Montgomery County is a national leader 
in adopting progressive initiatives aimed at promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's because of the hard work and support and advocacy of all of you gathered here today. So again, thank you for inviting me to be part of today's event. And I look forward to gathering with you next year in person for next year's breakfast. Proclamation, Montgomery County, Maryland. Whereas on December 13, 2001, the African American Business Council, known today as the African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, the Asian Pacific Political Alliance, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, each representing the three major minorities in Montgomery County, joined to sponsor the Minority Legislative Breakfast. And whereas this event represented the first time in a public forum public officials were called together by such a coalition to address minority concerns and share specific proposals to help minority communities. And whereas the coalition of African American, Asian American, and the Hispanic community represented 40% of the population and 45% of the county's student population, and believed then and believe now that the union of these three groups could bring about powerful and political change in the lives of minorities and all residents living in the county. And whereas the founders of the event believed then and believe today this event to be an important step in, in the political development and wherewithal within the minority community and continues to serve as a model of collaboration and advocacy for community goals and objectives. And whereas this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Minority Legislative Breakfast, convened by the African American Chamber of Commerce, Asian American Political Alliance, and Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, whose mission remains to ensure accountability of public officials and their attention to minority issues and priorities, and to foster a coalition of ideas and, and interests among and between minority communities. Now, therefore, do we, Mark Elridge as County Executive and Tom Hucker as County Council President, hereby proclaim Friday, December 18th, 2020 as Minority Legislative Breakfast Day in Montgomery County. And we call upon our residents to join in recognition and congratulations on the 20th anniversary of this important event and salute the organizers on their work to educate, advocate, and seek common objectives for the betterment of the entire community. Signed on this eighth day of December in the year 2020, County Executive Mark Elrich, County Council President Tom Hucker. Congratulations, everyone. And now I'd like to bring Janice Freeman, the President of the African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, to close the Minority Legislative Breakfast event. Wow, hasn't this been a great 20th Minority Legislative Breakfast? Good morning, my name is Janice Freeman, President and CEO of the African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County. Wasn't it great having our elected officials, the Asian American Political Alliance, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, the African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, would like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us this morning and to thank Michael Lynn, president of the Asian American Political Alliance for being the lead organizer this year. With the COVID-19 pandemic, 2020 has been a year we will never forget for many reasons. It has caused many illnesses and deaths. The suffering has been immense. Black Americans have died from the coronavirus at a greater rate than any other racial and ethnic group. They've also been victims of police brutality and killings at a disproportionate rate. In the case of George Floyd, an uh, African-American who died by the hands of a white police officer who knelt on his neck for unimaginable eight minutes and 46 seconds, Mr. Floyd's death invigorated nationwide protests as Black Americans and their diverse supporters declared that the institutionalized oppression and racial violence 
that has restrained and ended the lives of people of color for centuries needs to end. All of these systemic inequities have led to economic, health, and housing disparities and is extremely exhausting. The coronavirus has caused immediate shutdown for the federal, state, and local government, as well as private industries and educational institutions. With the exception of our frontline workers, this has led to loss of jobs, housing, businesses, health issues, and sometimes death. Many instances, contend communities and uh, religious organizations provided a human service to distribute food to families in need countywide. As a result of COVID-19, some tenants and homeowners have not been able to remain in their homes, pay rent or mortgage. However, the assistance of the county and state government, some receive financial resources and eviction moratorium. More than 20 percent of businesses that close by not will not be able to reopen. Again, there has been a number of grants that the county, state, and federal governments have offered to assist. In spite of what we have done since 2020, it has mobilized people to come out, vote at an increased rate, and with the possible approval of a vaccine, there is hope. During, 20, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it is mandatory that everyone wears a mask, keep the recommended social distance, and wash their hands. In conclusion, please stay safe. Keep looking to see us next year, 2020, as the African American Chamber of Commerce will be the host. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Now, before we come to the end of our program, I'd like to thank U.S. Senators Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen, Congressman John Sarbanes, David Trone, and Jamie Raskin, State Senator Craig Zucker, State Delegate Mark Corman, Montgomery County Executive Mark Alrich, and Montgomery County Council President Tom Hucker. On behalf of the Minority Legislative Breakfast, Thank you to the team at Montgomery Community Media, our media sponsor. In particular, I want to give a special shout out to David Berman and Adam Wyatt at Montgomery Community Media who helped bring our virtual event to life. If you want to learn more about our legislative agenda, please visit www.minoritylegislativebreakfast.com. It was an honor to emcee today's virtual event Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you watching the Minority Legislative Breakfast. Please take care and be safe.